Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now this is going to be a review of the Acoustic Energy A109 that I've been promising for some time, to be honest. Um, but firstly, I just wanted to sort of talk about why Acoustic Energy, why have I sort of gone down that route? I mean, I dropped Monitor Audio and I kind of replaced them with Dali, and that's been going really well, to be fair. Um, but where I think Acoustic Energy fits in is probably down at the bottom end, because I think quite strange, I've noticed this before, at the, at the cheaper end of, the sp of speakers, people tend to be more fussy about what they look like. So it doesn't seem to be that much of an issue when you get into the high end. People don't just don't seem to care what they look like at all. Whereas the cheaper you go, the more it's more important to have a decent wood finish or a, a specific look or whatever. Uh, so I needed a good budget speaker range to sit alongside Dali, just to give me another, that old phrase of string to, string to me bow, I suppose you'd call it. So, yeah, so that's what I've done. I mean, I could have done Q Acoustics. So like, I am kind of an agent for Q Acoustics and can sell them, but I've never really quite been into them somehow. Um, I mean, for one thing, they don't have the heritage of the Acoustic Energy. Acoustic Energy started off in the late 80s. They were a very, very niche manufacturer, actually. Very specific models they made. The little A1s that were um, a metal dome base unit, a uh, little tiny little monitor quite a rough finish actually, almost like a little miniature PA speaker they were really. Very, very hard to drive, uh, but they've got a real cult following though, they were superb. If you put a big amplifier onto them, and I used to use them with um, like big Levinson amps or with, um, what did I, what was good? Oh, the Music Fidelity A370, A470, the really big um, Music Fidelity power amps with the big grab handles on two-man lift jobs. They sounded incredible, absolutely incredible with those. Um, so they've got this heritage going right back. I mean, they did have a bit of a, a time when they, were, they went a bit mass market and they were doing AV stuff and all this sort of thing, but a lot of manufacturers kind of had to go down that route because the stereo market almost died. AV sort of came along as a kind of an, imp an upgrade. I hated that at the time. People, oh, I'm upgrading my stereo system to AV. No, you're not. You're changing it entirely. Um, you know, it's, it, it was a, yeah, it was a weird time in hi-fi area. Really. So yeah, they did a lot of sort of mass markety centre speakers, rear speakers, and all this sort of thing. I think they're trying to sort of find the way back to being a more specialist brand again because the range they're doing at the moment is lovely. I mean, they've really you can tell it's very very focused. They've been driven purely on sound quality, and it's really I think they really work. Whereas the Q acoustics, they are very good. Um, but their background is, is very different. They they haven't got a heritage particularly at all. They were commissioned by a distribution company. It's a really odd story, actually. There was a distribution company in the UK that distributes loads of different brands. I think Goldring, Grado, QED, loads of loads of brands. And they didn't have a speaker, so they commissioned somebody to create a range for them, and that became Q Acoustics. It it was, it was a really strange. I, I didn't expect them to do anything at all, but they've actually become they've actually been, become quite popular. I think probably probably because of pricing, I suppose, but. Anyway, Acoustic Energies, and I'll have a look at them in a second, I think they actually look very similar to the Q Acoustics, actually. There is, they may even come out of the set, the cabinetry might even be done in the same Chinese factory. Could be. It's a big statement, that, but they look very similar. So, anyway, I'll stop it here, and then we'll have a, have a good look around and um, talk about what they sound like, because they are very good. Right, so A109.2s. Um, I've actually called them Mark II on the website because the little the little two that they use in the uh, advertising brochure, it's basically 109 squared, little number two at the top there. Can't pre can't reproduce it on the website. I've tried, so it's they're Mark II on the website. Um, yeah, like I said, they do look a bit like a Q acoustic sort of uh, cabinet with the rounded edges and everything. I mean, that's probably the, where all the similarities end, to be honest. But the fit and finish of these is superb. I mean, they, this is obviously a vinyl wrap. But it's a really good one. I mean, it's actually ed all the edges and everything really nicely done. You wouldn't, you know, you're not going to cut yourself. <laughs> I've seen some, and they've been, you know, little sharp edges and little frayed bits and things. Nothing, none of that on these. They're really nicely put together. Um, they do the worn up. They do black. If you get the little, the little A hundred, the little, the little one, the, which is basically the top end of this, um, they do white as well. I think probably white will be a bit, a little bit too much on these, if I'm honest, really. So I can see why they don't do white. Uh, they do come with a grill, a little magnetic grill, which um, I haven't got out of the box as usual. Um, I was going to say, oh yeah, and they, uh, the surprising thing about these is when you come to move them, they weigh an absolute ton. They're just incredibly heavy. I mean, you, don't, you don't expect that in what, what is basically a budget speaker. 
the, I think the cabinetry on these, I think the 15 mil MBF, which is going for it actually, that's, that's pretty thick for a sort of, like I said, budget, what is a budget speaker? Um, on the back we've got, they've got a, they are a sort of ported design, but it's this sort of slot type port. And on the bottom we've got no bi wiring, just, um, just single wire, which seems to be pretty much the norm now. I think bi wiring seems to have kind of died to death now, really. Um, I was going to say, yeah, sound quality wise, okay, they're a budget speaker. They don't particularly excel at anything. And I think that sounds like a bit, a bit of a negative statement. But at the price that they are, they're surprisingly good. I mean, they, they're sort of. There's nothing about the sound of them would offend anybody. They've, they've got a, a nice, quite big scale to them. They're quite dynamic. They've got very refined top end. I mean, there's other things out there. Possibly, you know, the, you, things like Dali are a bit, got a bit more precision about them and whatever. But overall, they're, they're, it's just a really nice balance. And I, I could easily just sit and listen to these on a budget system, like a, a Planar One and a, a Riga IO with a pair of these, it, I, I can, you could just sit, the thing about it is you could just sit and listen to your music and you wouldn't be sitting judging the hi-fi, sort of, oh, I don't know about what the, the quality of the treble or not, oh, I don't think there's enough bass or anything like that. It, it to be just a, a nice, listenable sound. Obviously, if you started upgrading, then you can make things better, but it, it, there isn't anything about the sound of these that annoys you or makes you feel as though you need more. And there's an awful lot of speakers out there that are like that, which sort of tend to be very good in one, one area, but poor in another. They might have a wonderful mid-band, but the trouble's horrendous, or they've got no bass, and the mid, but the mid-band the mid is this or that. So, you, they're, like I say, they're very good all-rounder. All the models are like that. They all work really, really well, and they don't seem to be too fussy about source. Um, not that they wouldn't get better if you put them into a better kit, because all speakers do. Um, but they don't seem to tear apart, you know, things, if you plug, plug them into a fairly, you know, if you perhaps you had an old, an old deck that you wanted to get started with and you needed some new speakers, you could certainly start with these and have, a, say, an old Pioneer deck and a, and a JVC amp or something and just use, use a pair of these. And they would do it justice until you could upgrade the rest of it. So, the, you know, they're quite, basically quite an easygoing speaker. Um, and you could, upgrade, like I say, you could upgrade in, into them, you, probably not as well as you could with something like a Dali. Um, I think the Darleys will probably take bigger steps as you upgraded the rest of the kit, but they would do it because the driver, the drivers in these are actually, and particularly the base driver, um, does seem to be particularly good. So you've got the, the potential to, to really upgrade around them. I think these are probably my favourite in the range, which is unexpected because I tend to like the stand mount versions of things. I don't tend to be that into the floor standing versions, but um, yeah, overall, I really like them, um, and I'm glad I've taken them. <laughs> Glad I've taken them on because I mean these are six hundred pounds. I haven't got anything else in the shop that is six hundred pounds. I think the nearest to this I've got is um, Oberon fives at eight hundred. They are now. Um, so yeah, okay, another two hundred pounds. But and they are a better speaker. But really, if you're really tight on budget, you can't go wrong with these. I think they've been yeah. I've been really impressed with them. Really impressed. Obviously, they come with a grill. Uh, I always forget to get the grills out of the box when I'm doing <laughs> reviews because I, I tend to never have them out in the shop really because they just get lost. Uh, spikes on the bottom, usual sort of thing. The only thing I don't like about these, and it's not as obvious on these, I'll show you on the hundreds. Um, the only thing I don't like about them, and it, this is probably just me being a bit fussy, is that it's a sticker. Uh, and this one, these actually belong to Acoustic Energy and it's not actually, it's actually coming off. But it's a small thing, really, small thing. So there you go, that's the AE109 Mark II. Really pleased with them, and I think I should, to be honest, think I'll do should do pretty well with them. To be fair, I think I'm probably going to try and bundle, do a bit of system bundling on the website a little bit, and put a pair of these in with the whatever. I don't know what yet. Think of something, but yeah. I mean, the, the other thing about this, song, <laughs> I was going to stop there and I was just starting off again. The other thing about these is, I mean, they, it's there's not like I said, there's no there's no floor standards at, at this sort of price. Um, and a lot of people don't want speaker stands in the room, so it has been it has been a bit of an issue with people. So oh, I just need I just want a little a little uh, sort of stand mount speaker, but they don't like the look of any of the stands that are available, uh, and then also the prices of stands have gone through the roof as well. So there's not been a really good budget floor stander, uh, yeah, floor stander around at all. There's been nothing, no options at all until you get to the eight or nine hundred pound price point. So yeah, I think. Um, I think they are the ones. 
I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to turn the camera around. <laughs> Sorry if this sounds a little bit, a little bit babbly. Um, I'm off, I've, I've, this is my second, third attempt at doing this video. I've sort of got halfway through a couple of times and it's just been busy in the shop, so I've just kept getting interruptions. And I'm kind of waiting, there is a, a delivery due actually, um, which could have turned up at any minute. So I've been almost sort of watching the window just to see if he's coming in. So if, I if it seems a bit rushed and I've been repeating myself, sorry about that, just um, under, under lots of stress. You don't, know, you don't understand how stressful it is doing this. Anyway. <laughs> Don't forget to give, give us a like and a subscribe, and I will see you in a future video. I might actually, after this delivery has been, I've got loads of things have happened in the shop, actually. There's a, few, a load of uh, potential videos I can do, and I, I might try, because today, other than this delivery, nothing's happening at all. Well, could happen, but isn't. Um, so I might try and do a couple more videos today. The phone's ringing. It's not typical. I'll go on to the phone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future video.